Hello, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. For today's tutorial, I'm going to do my take on a watercolor moon. For a full list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below. So first things first, we're going to draw out our circle using whatever shape, a cup, some sort of circle shape that you have on hand. I have this roll of masking tape, so this is going to allow me to draw a perfect circle. And you're going to want to draw it fairly lightly, wherever you'd like on the page just so that you can have it end up fairly perfect. So for this moon painting, I'm going to show you the wet in wet technique. And we're gonna start with a round brush. This is a number 10 round brush. And I'm just gonna add in clear water. I'm gonna fill up the whole thing. For the first layer, we're just wanting to get a base. And I'm gonna do this moon in Payne's Gray. But if you are familiar with watercolors and you want to try out different colors, feel free to have at it. Try a different, few different variations. All right, so once we've filled that in, we're gonna use a smaller brush to go in and grab some of the color. So Paints Gray has this wonderful effect where it bleeds quite a bit. Not all colors react the same to water, and I enjoy the way the Payne's Gray really makes its way around the page. And if you find there's certain areas that are quite dark, you can just add more clear water over top and then lift the page up. So the way we do that is you lift the page up and just drop in clear water and it should make its way around. I love this magical effect that watercolor has when you drop clear water into it. It's quite beautiful. Sometimes it's easier just to shift the canvas around, sorry, watercolor paper around in order to get it to move. Like so. All right, so there's some areas that have a lot of water in them and those areas I want to be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna dab up with paper towel, but not pressing too hard because we don't wanna add a bunch of texture to it. So just going around, dabbing up a little bit, like so. Then I'm gonna use my fine brush to add some of that texture. So we're just gonna drop in certain areas. We're gonna do little spots of fairly rich pigment. And what you can do in order to have a lot of variation is take a dry brush like so and lift out some of that color in and around where you've added the Payne's Gray. Like so. All right, then we can go back in and start adding more again. I'm wanting one side to be a little bit darker and this to be fairly light. So it doesn't mean we're not gonna add some more here, but we're just not gonna add quite as much. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up those pencil lines now while I'm thinking of it. All right, so here I wanna draw quite dark right here. Right. And as it dries, certain places dry, you're gonna notice that the watercolor won't bleed as much and that's a really cool effect. We want that to happen. So just make your way around adding texture. Like so. All right, I'm gonna dry this up a little bit and that way I can continue on and it won't continuously bleed. All right, so now that it's mostly dry, I can go back in and keep adding texture. I am going to use this brush, it's a number eight round brush and I'm gonna add some Payne's Gray. And I'm just gonna start um, edging out some of these dark spots on the moon. And for this part, I'm not using clear water first, I'm just gonna go in 
and then massage some of them out with clear water just so that there's not these strong lines. But basically, you're just moving the brush around, allowing varying pressure to make the shapes unique. And then the more water you have, the more transparent it's gonna be. So where you want your moon to be lighter, for me, it's up here. I'm just using more water with the Payne's Gray. And if you end up adding a little bit too much and you wanna lighten it, just add more water. So I like just kind of move, making my way around. And then in some of these areas that are still wet, I can go ahead and darken them and then add clear water. Where I want it to be quite dark, I'm adding a lot of pigment and then I just add some clear water in to bleed it around. I've noticed in a lot of the watercolor moon tutorials and paintings, they always have sort of a bloom that comes up from the bottom corner of the page, which I think is kind of cool. You don't have to do it, but I think for the sake of this painting, I am because I really like it. All right, now we're gonna do some clear water over top. Although my water is fairly dirty, so I'm not sure how clear it's gonna end up being. But this is just gonna add even more texture to the painting. So just make your way around. Not adding too much, but just a little bit. Mine is almost at a point where I'm happy with it. I'm going to dab out these areas where I went outside of the lines because I want to keep it fairly perfect. Then I'm going to take a light amount of Payne's Gray and just redo this outline in certain parts just to clean it up. I like that nice crisp line like so. All right, and then I just want to darken up right here and maybe a little bit right here. I love the way the Payne's Gray has that blue tinge to it. It's so unique and so beautiful. All right, so I think we're gonna let this dry completely and then I'll show you how to add some of those final touches. All right, so now that the painting is almost done, I'm going to show you how to do a few finishing touches using white and then a little bit using the Payne's Gray. So first things first, I'm going to take Payne's Gray and I'm going to draw a light circle right down here. And I'm gonna even lighten it even more than this using clear water, just like so. And this shape is gonna come up and you wanna use such a subtle amount. You should barely see it but you just wanna have lines coming up from that shape that we will further highlight using the white paint, just like so. All right, so I have this poster color, any acrylic paint will work, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna add a few little highlights here and there. So we're gonna highlight this part. Just add some lines coming up. You'll notice it more where it's dark, obviously, but it's supposed to be fairly subtle. All right, and we're gonna just go in and outline a few of these little spots. I just wanna add little highlight marks, basically following the shape of a few of these areas where the watercolors naturally pooled, I'm gonna highlight them. 
You don't have to do too many. Wherever you think it looks good. Sort of like that. I like to just pick out the ones that I feel like could use highlighting. Just like so. And then last but not least, I'm gonna use my wide brush with clear water on it to grab a tiny bit of white and just add a few dots on it. You don't have to do this. If you're happy as is, just leave it. I'm gonna have more where it's light, just like so. So that is done. If you enjoyed painting along with me, be sure to hit the like button and please hit subscribe if you wanna see other videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching.